All right, this is fourth grade, module three, lesson 32. And in this student, we're gonna be practicing, our students are gonna be practicing that standard algorithm for division. They're gonna be dividing by six, seven, eight, and nine. And the real point of this lesson is to have students practice reading the problem and then drawing the model that that problem represents so that students can begin making the connection between the model or the drawing and the, the word problem. A lot of teachers are always saying, oh, my students have a hard time with word problems. So this lesson is really gonna focus on giving the students an opportunity to understand the word problem so that they can model it appropriately. All right, for these problems, I'm going to show the tape diagram for all of the problems, but I'm only gonna solve the actual division problem for a couple of them. So let's get started. Uh, Menica bought a package of five, 435 party favors to give to the guests at her birthday party. And she calculated that she could give nine party favors to each guest. How many guests is she expecting? So what is that tape diagram going to look like? Well, we're going to start with a bar. And that entire bar represents the 435 party favors. And we want to know, she knows she's going to give nine party favors to each guest. So that means we've got nine right here. Then we've got nine right here. Then we've got nine right here. And we are going to keep going nine, 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 until we have reached all the way to 435. So the big question is, how many nines are there going to be? And now this represents a nice, this is kind of basically a tape diagram representing division. Um, and so now we could divide. So I will actually divide 435 divided by nine. And so we've got four hundreds divided amongst nine groups. You can't do that. So we're going to think about 43 tens divided amongst nine groups. And 43 tens divided amongst nine groups means there's going to be four tens in each of those groups. That gives us 36 tens. And we're going to subtract and we end up with, uh, let's see, seven tens left over. Then we're going to bring down that five because now we have seven tens plus five ones. So now we have 75 ones being divided amongst the nine groups. So that means eight, each group gets eight ones, or eight units. So that's 72. We have three units left over. So our answer is 48 with a remainder of three. So what does that mean? That means, if we're going to define this and de represent this, um, that means we're going to have 48 nines, nine, 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 forty eight nines, forty eight nines, and this remainder of three means we're going to have three party favors. <laughs> I'm trying to draw a party favor here. Three party favors left over. Three favors left over. All right, and that's what that means. So she's expecting 48 guests, and she knows that she's going to have three party favors left over. So this one, I'm just going to draw the tape diagram. I'm not going to solve the division problem. But we have 4,000 pencils were donated to an elementary school. If eight classrooms shared the pencils equally, how many pencils did each class receive? You know what? I'm actually going to divide. I am going to do this one because this is the other kind of division problem. So this is um, called a partitive because we know that there's eight parts. There's eight classrooms. So the whole tape diagram is 4,000 pencils. And we know we're going to divide that up into eight groups. And now we know how many groups. It's eight. And that's why I wanted to do this one. The other problem, the previous problem, we didn't know how many groups. We just knew that each group had nine. This time, we, we know that there's eight groups. 
eight classrooms. And the, the question is, how big is each classroom or each group? How many pencils are in each classroom? So let's do it. So we've got 4,000 divided by 8. 4,000, 4 thousands divided amongst 8 groups. You can't do. So we're going to think of this as 40 hundreds. And 40 hundreds divided amongst 8 groups means each group gets 5. And that means we have nothing left over. And so we have no hun uh, no tens, no hun uh, no units. So the answer is 500. And sure enough, if you know, if we wanted to check our math, we could do 500 times 8. And then 8 times 5 is 40 plus bring these two extra zeros down. So there's our 4000. So we know we did it right. And we know that each classroom gets 500 pencils, and there is no remainder, so the remainder is zero. So that means there are no pencils left over. So each classroom gets 500 pencils. Here is where I'm just going to draw the model. So we've got 2,008 kilograms of potatoes were packed into sacks. So here is our 2,000 eight uh, potatoes, kilograms of potatoes, and they're, they're packed into sacks weighing eight kilograms each, how many sacks were packed. So that means here's eight kilograms, here's eight kilograms, here's eight kilograms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the question is, how many of these eight kilograms are we going to have? So there's our question mark right there. So the proper division is going to be 2,008 divided by 8. And that gives us the division problem that's going to tell us how many sacks are packed. Uh, Baker made seven batches of muffins, and there was a total of 252 muffins. If there was the same number of muffins in each of those seven batches, how many muffins were in a batch? So the idea is, here is our muffins. This is our total number of muffins. So it's 252 muffins. And we know that there are seven batches. So that means we can cut that into seven groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because that each one of these groups, or each one of these units, represents a batch of muffins. And the question is, how many muffins is in one batch? So what's our division problem? Our division problem is going to be 252 divided by 7. And parents and teachers, I'm going to leave it up to you to show the division because the important thing right here is what should the tape diagram look like? And the last problem, we have Samantha, and she ran... 3,003 ,003 meters in seven days. If she ran the same distance each day, how far did Samantha run in three days? Ooh, that's a little bit of a trick, isn't it? So we're going to start by drawing the tape diagram, and the tape diagram represents the 3,003 ,003 meters that she did in seven days. So we know that we need to cut this into seven parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts. And the idea is each one of those represents a day. So that equals one day. So the division is going to be 3,003 ,003 divided by 7. But here's the thing. That only gives us the answer for one day right here, one day. But the question is, how, how about three days? So once you've got that answer for one day, you then have to multiply or add repeatedly and get the answer for three days. So you're going to have to get your answer, which is for one day, and then multiply by three to get three days. And that wraps up Let's see, 4th grade, Module 3, Lesson 32. 
students are practicing division, but the, really the important thing is they're dividing and they're, I mean, they're modeling what the division looks like. And they're either dividing where they are, they know the number of parts and their job is to figure out one part, or they know that the whole, and let's just stick with 252, and they're, they're being told, well, there's how many fours, let's say, how many fours? So we know the size of each group, and the question is, how many groups are there? So those are the two different kinds. Teachers, this is called uh, partitive because we know how many parts. And this is called uh, measure, measurement, uh, where you know the size of each group and you're just trying to figure out how many groups there are.